science is profoundly a human adventure. It is an endeavor of building knowledge. Interestingly, many useful scientific discoveries arose from seemingly pointless questions that simply sparked the curiosity of a scientist. Well, I am a scientist, and I love pointless questions. <laughs> Stay with me. For instance, imagine a large body of water, and now cut out a small pocket of water to make an empty bubble. Let's just call this a cavity. What would happen to such a cavity? Well, the water would push into the cavity to make it smaller and smaller and still smaller. In fact, a millimeter-sized cavity would only take a hundredth of a hundredth of a second to collapse. At the end of this implosion, when the cavity's wall crashes into itself at supersonic speed, then its full motion energy gets compressed into virtually a single point. Researchers found that this highly concentrated energy can then escape in the form of fast water jets, shock waves, and sometimes a flash of light emitted by compressed gas hotter than the surface of the sun. Scientists still don't quite understand how much energy goes into each of these channels. So my colleagues and I decided to find out by asking nature itself. We decided to measure precisely the jets, shocks, and light of cavities in various conditions. But to simplify the challenge, we chose to start with the ideal case of a single, isolated, extremely spherical cavity. Now, making such a perfect bubble really isn't easy. It required us to design an optical system that is able to focus a laser precisely in water. At the focal point, the laser produces a small explosion that then generates the most spherical cavitation bubbles ever studied. There is only one problem with these bubbles, gravity. The force of gravity eventually distorts every spherical cavity into a knot pear shape. So if we are serious about studying the most simple situation, we must remove gravity. But this is easier said than done, since the only way to remove gravity is to be in free fall. You are experiencing short moments of free fall uh, in a bungee jump, during the first seconds of a skydive, or on a diving roller coaster. However, these scenarios are way too scary for our experiment. <laughs> we would like to have a more stable and longer free fall trajectory, such as on a spaceship in orbit, which is in endless free fall around the Earth. A more economical way are so-called parabolic flights, where an aircraft injects itself into an arc of an ellipse. Once, when I was still a physics student, my friends and I had a drink after an exam, when suddenly a poster caught our attention. It was a poster by the European Space Agency, ESA, announcing an international contest for students to fly their own experiment on parabolic flights. Now, this was a game-changing moment in our lives. We went for it, won the competition, and just months later, our experimental setup arrived in Bordeaux, France, ready to be loaded into the world's largest aircraft for parabolic flights. In the early morning, when everything looks so calm from the outside, our team of scientists and engineers is enthusiastically getting the experiment flight ready. And just before the doors of the aircraft get closed for departure, I smuggle an Australian roots football into the plane for a bit of fun. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelt as we are about to take off on the Airbus A310 0G. Once established in cruise flight in military airspace above the Atlantic Ocean, 
the pilots steadily pull up the nose to 47 degrees above the horizon. During this slow turn, the passengers are in hypogravity. The football now has twice its weight. You feel like you are glued to the floor, and raising your arms is like weightlifting. But then the engines get turned down, such that the entire plane moves just like a piece of rock thrown into empty space. This plane isn't flying anymore. It is falling with style. <laughs> For 22 seconds, everything is in free fall. You feel light like a feather, and you get a strange perception that up and down have disappeared. There is no notion of the fact that we are all on a huge ballistic trajectory. But <laughs> towards the end of the parabola, the plane is now diving towards the ocean, and the pilots must recover it by pulling the nose up again, leading through another phase of hypogravity back to steady cruise flight. And then this whole maneuver is repeated 30 more times. <laughs> Over the past years, our team has accumulated nearly 800 parabolas worth about five hours of continuous weightlessness. And whenever we are floating, the bubbles start to dance. Slow motion movies reveal the hidden beauty taking place in just the blink of an eye. Zero gravity lets the bubbles collapse with nearly perfect symmetry. And at 10 million frames per second, we registered flashes of light and shock waves stronger than ever observed on the ground. Most importantly, we were able to directly compare identical bubbles in zero gravity, normal gravity, and hypogravity. This comparison led to a predictive theory for the amount of energy cavities turn into jets shocks and heat as a function of the surrounding pressure gradient. Interestingly, these models are turning out to be useful, not just in space, but right here on Earth. This is because cavities in complex pressure fields are, in fact, commonplace. For instance, behind the moving edge of a spinning ship propeller, the pressure can be so low that the water literally gets ripped apart into cavities. A closer look at a similar blade exposed to cavitation for some time then reveals a lot of damage on the metal done by millions of little collapsing bubbles. Nature has already learned to harvest this destructive power. For instance, the odd-looking pistol shrimp with its huge oversized right claw produces a bubble whose collapse shock can then destroy prey at a distance. We humans are also learning to benefit from cavitation. Artificially induced bubbles can already be used to destroy bacteria in dirty water, to remove kidney stones, and even to kill cancer cells in living tissue. Since our models have the potential to help improve such beneficial applications, most of our current research is actually focused on biomedicine. Initially, we had no idea where this research was going to lead us. It was hard to foresee that curiosity-driven questions can take you to zero gravity, let alone that the results would yield some practical benefit. This shows the value of blue sky science. Basic research is not about addressing imminent practical issues, but about supplying a basis for answering the questions of tomorrow. Thank you.